Jiu-Jitsu Blog, day three, coming at you. I am on my way to Jiu-Jitsu right now. Being honest, I haven't had any chance to practice much this week. Pretty crazy stuff happened, but I did get a chance to watch video. I had to go to Target and grab a pair of pants because the pants that I've been wearing, I guess, have a zipper, and he doesn't want anything metal on my pants. It'll tear up the mats or hurt somebody. So I went and grabbed a quick pair of pants from Target, and then also something that I just didn't think about that's a thing is like hygiene. It's important to like shower beforehand so that the poor guy that you're with doesn't have to smell your stink, nasty armpits or butt or whatever. It's important to take a shower beforehand. Clip your nails. I powder my B&B. Oh, another good thing is gum, which of course I forgot. Are you kidding me? I bought a pack of gum and I forgot it in the car. So I got this one piece. Remember the, from when I stole last week? This is the one I paid for. Ma'am, that's some old Big Red. Big Red fans, they know. Still tastes the same. Actually, it's kind of gross when it's hot. You ever had that hot stick of Big Red? Oh, that sounds like an adult movie. All right, so I got the gum, so breath check. I put on deodorant, clean socks and shoes, brand new pair of pants, a laundry press, sweatshirt. We good, baby. Heading it back into the gauntlet. Should be fun. I'm gonna monitor my breathing. Try not to hold my breath ever. It's funny. You remember last week's story about me freaking out because uh, I couldn't breathe. He was just laying on top of me. It made me remember when I was younger, I was a wrestler, yeah? My eighth grade year, I was undefeated in wrestling. Going into the final tournament. Whoever won that went to states. And I won all my matches. And then my last match went up against a dude named Doug Falkenberry. I still remember this fool. Never forget it. We're wrestling. He's got really good technique. And at some point during the match, this dude wraps me up. He's got me on my back. He's on top of me. Just like what happened last week at Jiu-Jitsu. And at some point, he just flattened out his body and put his soft little belly right on my face. His belly covered my nose and my mouth. Just, he let out his gut. I don't know if he had a gut. He was pretty uh, in shape, but it was like a plastic bag wrapped over my face. Went to take in a breath and I couldn't. I freak out. I'm trying to shake my face to get it from underneath his belly. I can't get it out and he's laying on me, but I can't tap because he's got my arms wrapped up. So I freaked out and I screamed as loud as I could. I can't breathe! And I set it into his belly because he was still over me. So it was like, no one could hear me. I couldn't breathe, I was screaming for help. My arms were wrapped up. I was dying. I was being murdered in front of a gymnasium full of fans. I guess one of my taps reached the ground and the ref saw it, or maybe he pinned me or something. The ref called the fight, and I just remember being so glad to be alive. I did not even care I lost that fight. I was like, I was dying. And I realized that's that feeling I got last week when he was on my face. It's like a childhood trauma. I brought that junk back up. And then I had this whole long talk to my mom about how I got asthma. She has asthma. I have exercise-induced asthma. Pretty sure it's from all that secondhand smoke. And hers is from smoking. Mine's probably from all those years of breathing in that Newport 100. Probably a few parliaments, camel lights. I probably breathed in a few cools, fencing and hedges. So I just got a touch of the asthma. I got a touch of the sma. It's because I can't say touch of the as. <laughs> so I got a touch of the sma, and I think it's just from those last cools, those cool menthols that she smoked. Probably the last four or five was just too much for my little lungs. Maybe if they'd have rolled the window down an inch or two when I was in my baby seat. Hey, that was the 80s, folks. I got some exercise-induced asthma. What that means is it doesn't really bother me, affect me. I don't really notice it. But, man, when I'm working out, whoo, my lungs get so hot, I get lava lung. It gets so hot, like somebody put hot coals in my, in my chest, and I start salivating. I remember getting it when I was playing basketball as a kid in high school during conditioning week. Do they still have those anymore? I feel like they know more how to raise children and they don't do conditioning week. That was like hell week, where you used to have to do like uh, suicides until you threw up. 
I swear I remember hearing my coach say, if you didn't throw up, you ain't running fast enough. Can't do that now, bro. So in any case, I'm going to monitor my breathing, try to get in those nice, fresh breaths. This nostril is clearer than it normally is. Remember, I got that deviated septum. I even had surgery, didn't do much. But try to get that snout working. Take in those deep breaths and work hard today. It should take a couple hours. And then, of course, the kids are getting dropped off at the parents' house. And we got Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier from the Bayou. And the wifey's coming to watch because she's a huge Conor McGregor fan. She probably even likes Dustin Poirier, too. It's a handsome fella. We're going to go over to uh, her brother's house and watch the fight. So should be a good day. I'll try to get some footage, and then I'll catch you up on how things went. Stay tuned. <laughs> elbow I'm gonna get high up I want my hips off the ground the higher my hips are the better the advantage for me and I sweep okay so what I like to do from here is I like to start setting up things and taxing this arms I got Kimura options and I got bicep slicer options here boom and you can practice it both ways boom get that muscle memory built up boom you'll be surprised how they just go. They want to go because the pressure is yeah. so bad. <laughs> They're like, oh, it feels good for a second. Okay, so the end of day three. Today was different than the last two days in the sense that we didn't roll today. I just go with the flow. I, I trust in his process. We drilled again the top cross, the bicep slicer, and the Kimura. But then he also wanted me to work on sweeps because we haven't done that as of yet. So I've never been in the guard. So he had me pull guard and then practice sweeps. The sweeps that we worked on were the flower sweep, which is also known as the pendulum sweep. He showed me a lot on the dummy and then I worked a lot on the dummy. So everything I did today was on the dummy. Make no mistake about it. My friend Matt is a brilliant teacher. He may be one of the most elite communicators I've ever experienced. He, he's a very good people reader. I can read people very well. Matthew is maybe to a level that I have a hard time even recognizing. It's wonderful to even be there with him when he communicates and explains things to me. I learned so much with him and I'm, I'm just incredibly indebted. To do this for a friend is fantastic. There's one thing about him, he's always been like that for me. He's always been there for me. He's always helped when he could and he's a loyal friend, so. Today what I realized about jujitsu is it's essentially a series of algorithms. And man, the algorithms, they grow exponentially. Your defenses shrink exponentially. So at high level jujitsu, you're either being manipulated mechanically into the position he wants you, or you're being manip manipulated mentally so that you will thereby present yourself how he wants you to present yourself. So if you're going to attempt A, to which you have a sequence of A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, or you're going to attempt A knowing that he's going to defend one of a few ways, and when he does that, you have B, C, and D based on how he defends. Should he then take the bait and defend that way, you lock up D, to which now your sequence is D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. But when he defends D1, and takes the bait, you now have D1 Alpha or D1 Bravo or D1 Charlie. It's literally a series of algorithms and options that you can run. So, man, it, it, it feels very, it's very intense and it's very cumbersome on my mind to know that there's so much that you don't know. As confusing as what I just said sounds, it's way more confusing when you're trying to do it because your brain has to link up with your body. You can think something all you want, but if you haven't engaged in that move or that attempt or that attack, then it's all theory. But if your body is really in sync with what you're thinking and you think them as you do them, freestyle if you will, the faster and better you are at freestyling and adapting and the broader your quiver of moves, 
the better you become, which just goes to show and is a perfect example of how there's levels to jiu-jitsu and how you can be 20 years into it and still be growing. And we'll see what happens next week. I'm excited. I got to I gotta try to practice more. Uh, we'll see, man. Thank you guys for checking this out. This is therapeutic, and it's also something that I can look back and watch, and it, it helps me with my growth. So you guys are the best. I appreciate you, and until the next time, aloha. Thank you.